G'day, Heath here from PickingLessons.com, the trumpet hall pipe. This is a fun tune to play. Uh, we're in the key of G. You may recognise it as the theme from Captain Pugwash, so it's the tune from that show. But we're in the key of G. There are two parts. It's a great exercise on the mandolin. We've got lots of things to work on. We've got triplets. We're playing in the hornpipe feel, so a shuffle. Uh, we've got some really good scale exercises that you can sort of drag out and, and use in your practice in general as well. So we'll have a look at what's going on in part A here in this video in a moment. But if you head to pickandlessons.com, you can grab yourself a copy of the tablature, so the complete arrangement there. In the member section, we'll also break down the lesson for part B and you'll have a play along and backing tracks to check out once you get to know the tune to help you with your practice. Okay, so we're in the key of G. Let's have a look at this A part. We're in 4-4 time. It's a horn pipe, so it has that somewhat of a shuffle feel that we want to play with, yeah? Long, short, long, short, long, short. For example, in the second measure, when we're playing our eighth notes, they're, they're uneven. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. We'll get to that in a moment. We've got some triplets uh, that we'll have a look at as well. So let's break it down. This first measure, we start out with these triplet groupings. So we have three eighth note triplets in the first beat, then that quarter note on the second beat. So one and a two, three and a four, basically repeating on the second half. Right hand wise, triplets, we're gonna go down, up, down. The quarter note that comes in straight away, we're gonna pick as an up. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Very sort of efficient way of approaching the triplets in this passage. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Left hand fingering while we're on it is basically just your standard fingering position for the open G scale. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. As soon as we finish, we're about to launch into some eighth notes. So we want to get back into our regular picking. So we're finishing an on and up on the downbeat because of the triplets and the setup we've got. But the next note wants to also be an up. But it is going to be late because of the shuffle. So second half of the measure, down, up, down, up, up. And that up's going to set us up for the next passage of down, up, down, up, alternating picking. So second half of the first measure, down, up, down, up. Three and a four and. All right, let's spend a bit of time in this next measure on the eighth note feel that we want for the hornpipe. So we are shuffling it and instead of playing the eighth note straight, which would sound like this, one and two and three and four and, so evenly spaced, we want them uneven, so a long to a short. So long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. A nice way of counting it, if we count in threes like a triplet, we play the one and then the three in each beat. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That gives us that feel we're after. So straight sounds like this. And the feel we're after for this hornpipe is. So do keep an ear out for that. And it really just affects the eighth notes and the second eighth note. The downbeat note is still on the downbeat, yeah? Let's put together the first two bars just so we can hear how that's gonna be structured together. So from the beginning, three, four triplets. Up. One more time, a little slower. Three, four, one and a two, three and a four and one. Two and three and four and. Get to know that first couple of bars, that first opening phrase, because it'll set you up for the rest of this A section. In measure three, we have a similar idea, but on the D. Just straight quarter note on the end there, but same picking. And then we're into another arpeggio. So essentially in the second measure, it was a G arpeggio. And we're doing a similar thing here in measure four over the D seventh arpeggio. Yeah, so same kind of idea, remembering the feel we're after, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. The fingering there is interesting, just a slight anomaly actually, because the second finger on the fifth, fourth fret, normally you also use the second finger on the third fret. So you could go something like this, and use that second finger twice, that's perfectly acceptable. But you might find in this passage, if we use our first, it might be a little easier. So something like this, second finger, and first finger. Yeah, just the two fingers in that, that position there. Second half of the tune starts out in a very similar way to the beginning. 
that G arpeggio again, but this time we prop on that G, two quarter notes at the end of that sixth measure. Uh, the turnaround before we hit the repeat. Yeah, and then that will get us back into the repeat. Go through this section twice. So in measure seven. Starting on the F sharp, so we're over the top of the D chord there. Then the A7. And we're just using notes from the G scale and we're moving in this um, four note pattern. So from the F sharp, we go up two notes in the scale. So we leap over two and then back down, descending through the scale. So it's a nice pattern that you could practice separately and continue through the scale. Yeah, so it's, it's a really nice way of approaching your scale practice. So we've got straight from this tune, second fret to the fifth. Yeah, that's the idea of the exercise you could use. And then you just go to the next note in the scale, descending to the E and follow that theme. So that's what we see in the tune there. If you wanted to continue the exercise, start on the D. Then go to the C. Then to the B, and so on, yeah? So whichever note you're starting the scale, go up two steps in the scale, then just descend through it. And we could do it the other way as well, but that's really good exercise, yeah? Back to the tune for a moment. So the ending in measure eight, One, two, and three, and four, and remembering the feel that we're after. So there we have part A. Do repeat it twice. Uh, watch the right hand in these moments where we have the triplet. You could, an, an alternate way of playing these triplets could be down, up, down, down, and forcing that downstroke on the beat. And that's, that's great as well, and we often do that in a jig uh, when we've got the three note gripping in a jig. But in this one, for efficiency's sake, it's kind of nice to just play the up on the quarter note because, you know, it's going to work fine. Let's have a once through. We'll go from the top. We'll go th once through the A part, not too quick. So from the top, three, four. go through that twice. So there we have part A. It's a fun tune to play, yeah? And then we, we do have some exercises that we can use in it that you can pull out and, and use as exercises in your practice separately as well. So that's a great thing when we're learning a tune. Now, if you head to pickandlessons.com, we will break down part B, but you can grab yourself a copy of the tablature while you're there as well. So pickandlessons.com, I'll see you there.